Okay, hello everyone, we're going to make a very different video today and you can see that my setup is slightly different to what we normally have and the reason for this is actually what we're going to be doing is setting up Streamlabs OBS in this case or Slobs or there's another platform called OBS. There's a range of different platforms here that are basically open broadcast systems which will allow you to live stream to a range of different services such as YouTube or Twitch or any of these other kind of free services that you can utilize. The one thing that I will say at the very beginning of this video is this is not for sensitive uh, streams. So if you're if you're live streaming your latest sales statistics or analytics or whatever it might be, this probably won't be the service for you. You'll need some kind of IPTV streaming system that you can actually manage. But for more external streams that you actually want to share and they exist on YouTube and you want to go and grab them. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our browser. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need to do is go over to your YouTube channel. You'll need that YouTube channel. Select the top right hand corner and go over to your YouTube studio. This is where you can go and set up your live streams. From there, we've created an example on here. We want to go over to the top right and there's the go live button. Now at this point, you'll need to go and set this up. I'm going to go and set this up at a later date. So now that we've gone into our stream, we're going to need to head over to the stream option here and you'll see your stream settings. Now you'll need to set up your Streamlabs OBS with your YouTube account or whatever it is you're using. So to download Streamlabs OBS, you can go to slobs.com or streamlabsobs.com. I've got mine installed right now. There is a whole uh, guide and range in this article where you can go and figure out how you want to configure your Streamlabs. This could be with uh, full screen video or you could have your webcam on there. There's a huge amount of choices that you can do with these sources and scenes to really make it your own. So what we're actually going to do is set up our streaming service within here. So within Streamlabs OBS, you can see if I log out here, When you're logging back into Streamlabs OBS, it'll ask you what platform you want to connect to. So if you're already with Twitch or YouTube or Facebook, you can select that platform and log in via those signing credentials. So it will automatically connect. Now that that's connected in, it will automatically connect it to your YouTube account. Another thing to bear in mind with this is because we're streaming through YouTube, we're not going to be able to stream this privately. If we stream it privately, obviously we won't be able to send that link anywhere and Signage Live isn't going to be able to pick up on it. So you can either do this as unlisted, which means that the browser won't be visible, or you can do it as just completely open and visible to all. So if you wanted to live stream this to be visible to others and you wanted to show it on a digital signage, this is perfect. So now what we're going to do is hit our go live button. And what we can do is create a new event. And I'm going to give this a title and a description. So that could be anything, but I've just set this up to say test and I'm going to confirm and go live. What Streamlabs is now doing is connecting to your YouTube account and getting it ready to be set up to be deliverable. So we're live right now. And you might see that my screen will try and pick it up. And there we go. Look, it's perfect. It's already set up on my screen. But what I'm going to show you to do now that we've set up YouTube and we've set it up to live stream, we just need to go and configure this to display on Signage Live. So to go over those steps again, we've gone into YouTube. We've set up our, seat, our stream. You can now go over to, now that we're live, we can go over to Manage on the left-hand side. And we can see that test stream is going live. One other thing to bear in mind is if we're going to live stream this, we need to make sure that when we click on that live stream and then in the edit tab at the top right, before you hit the live button and before you go live, you should make sure that your visibility is set to what you prefer. So right now it's set to public, but that could be unlisted. Bearing in mind a public live stream, you can make a permanent URL. So you don't need to set this up next time. If you do this as unlisted, it will make a new URL each time. So you need to make sure to go and grab that URL from your stream and publish it to Signage Live before you actually confirm that you're going live. So you may need to have your OBS on for a few minutes whilst you configure this, but obviously no one's able to see it. You can then go down to the playlists uh, and sections down here. And the one that we're looking for is to allow embedding. So you need to allow the embedding to make sure that this is available on your stream. And that is variable depending on what hardware you have. But if you're allowing embedding, you're making sure that the content is able to display on that screen. So the next step is to go into Signage Live. So I'm going to do that now. So now what you want to do is head over to your Signage Live and go to your playlist editor. Now what I've done is created a dedicated playlist specifically for live streaming. So if I go to my recently added, I can find the 
And there you go, so you can see that I've got my live stream playlist which I created earlier. I'll double click on that, and in the marketplace, which you'll find on the blue t uh, plus button on the top there, we can go to from the marketplace, and in there we'll find the YouTube app, which will work for YouTube videos, but it also work for your live streams as well. So we scroll down to find the YouTube app, we just need to add this to our signage live network, and you'll find that in the recently added tab. So now that we've done that, you can see I've clicked and dragged my YouTube app across. What I've actually done in this scenario is made this particular app run for 23 hours. And the reason that I've done that is because I don't know how long I'm going to be live streaming for. I could decide that I want to live stream for a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. So you can actually configure this to be uh, set up with a trigger that will start and stop your live stream. You can look at a signage live web trigger for one of those and that will make it really, really seamless. You could even connect that live stream uh, via Postman into OBS if you wanted to as well to make it completely clear uh, when you want to start the stream and stop the stream. But double clicking on that app, you can see that the video ID is the video ID. I'm going to refresh this page here. Okay, so now we've got our live stream up and running and it's running live right now, but we haven't sent it to signage live. I can just click on this and go to the top right hand corner and we've got the share button. Now in the share button, you've got this long code here. What we want to do is just copy the first piece here, the VH, etc., etc. Copy that and then paste it into our video ID. Once we hit refresh, we'll be able to see in the preview page here that the live stream is running. So there we go. We can now see that live stream running as expected and then hit OK. At this point, you might want to publish or save this, but this playlist is already running on this screen, so I'm just going to save the details. Now, somewhere within the next 60 seconds, that will go live because it registers that obviously there's new content to display. It will publish that to the screen, update the URL, and it will start displaying. Now, this is a simple way of setting up the YouTube live stream. It could become more complex. What I would recommend is start looking at uh, web triggers. And again, if this is something that you want to do with more sensitive information, I definitely wouldn't recommend going down the YouTube route. I would go down a, uh, a slightly different route with something like uh, your own IPTV hosting. This will work on a local intranet as well. So if you wanted to host it locally, you can do. And now just to prove the fact, what I'm actually gonna do is move this device over. And within Streamlabs, I'm going to set up a camera. Okay, and there we have it. So now we have my Streamlabs OBS, which you'll hopefully be able to see just on the corner there. Uh, and that's running the full screen video in this case. But again, it could be full screen video with screen share or whatever it might be. And as you can see, probably with some delay, you can see me checking the stream to make sure it's running. So as this happens, it will be a slight delay, obviously, depending on what your Streamlabs or your YouTube streaming settings are. And that's something you need to consider when you're configuring everything. Uh, but then this should be a really simple way to set everything up. You can see me now starting to talk in the background. Uh, and then what you can do is connect this up to a web trigger system. So once the stream is completed, you'll just be able to hit that web trigger stop. You can interrupt or stop the interrupt, which would be that YouTube live stream and return back to your regular content. So hopefully that's been useful. Uh, I really would advise if you want to go into this, then feel free to give us a message. We'll be more than happy to walk you through this or start looking at the other options. And again, if you want to create a more dedicated IPTV version of this, it again can be done really, really easily. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this has been useful and we'll see you on the next one.